To date or not to date, that is the question. Dating. How easy is it to meet someone new? Can you really meet the love of your life online? Or is no substitute to the traditional format of meeting in bars and nightclubs? I'm on the streets of London, interviewing men and women, young and old, singletons, those people in relationships, different creeds, different religions, and even different sexual preferences to find out whether technology is the answer to finding that perfect partner. Uh, my name's Gautam and I'm single at the moment. Okay, hi, I'm uh, Maxima. I am living in France at the moment and I am in a relationship. So I'm Lewis, uh, I'm single. Uh, my name is Candice, I'm from Indonesia but I live in Belfast. My name is Hugo, I'm from France, from Paris actually. I've been in London since 10 days. I'm a student at Queen Mary, just up there. Uh, right now I'm uh, in a relationship actually. Uh, I'm Sarah, 21 years old and I live in the Netherlands and I'm single right now. Hi, I'm Freya and I'm currently single. So my name is Louis, I'm half British, half French and I'm currently in a relationship. Uh, my name is Anna, I'm from Surrey and I'm single. Hi, I'm April and I'm currently in a relationship. Almost 7.7 .7 billion of us live on this planet. Some will prefer their own company, but the majority will elect to live as a couple. So where do you find that perfect partner? At work? At a club? On holiday? The list is endless. Then if you meet someone face to face, will they be a long-term partner? Many say in a big city, you can so easily be invisible. Is online dating the solution? I, I don't really. I just kind of observe, chill. <laughs> I don't really, I'm not very proactive on the uh, dating scene, I guess. I've been set up through friends with a few people, um, but yeah, I do do online dating as well. I think it can help you meet people further away, which is quite interesting. So not really online dating, but more like real uh, meeting with people, like in real life? I think they're normally just friends. <laughs> and then I go on a date and yeah, that's how it goes, yeah. But also online dating is, I, I'm not crazy about it because there's a culture of people always looking for something better. Um, I think like with mo modern dating shows as well, there's this whole, the whole swiping thing. Um, people meet someone but they think, oh, there might be someone better. And they don't work so hard at relationships. So there's, I think there's this throwaway culture almost with um, dating relationships. So I think if you meet someone face to face and get to know them a little better first, it can work in your favor. But I do do both. I think it depends on the individual. I haven't been on a date for like a month or something like that. The last one I went on was with like an old colleague. That wasn't through um, through uh, online dating or anything like that. And I don't know what to say about it to be honest. Well, I we started talking online, but uh, I, I had an, an old fashioned crush. It just sort of facilitated it, if that makes sense. Um, no, nothing for me has ever really been online. I think it's more. I'll meet someone in person and then, I don't know, maybe it's quite spontaneous, so maybe we've met in the morning and then in the afternoon we go off and do something else. I mean, it just kind of, it's, it happens, it happens, if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I, I, I'm not really, I don't know, I'm not really into this whole concept of 
dating. I mean, I've been on a few, but I just don't really find them very comfortable. It's very uh, an awkward situation. Seems a bit forced and false and pre. I, I don't know. I just I just don't get it. I think so. In the U.S., 40% of the population have tried online dating. Figures are similar in other parts of the world. There are over 8,000 dating sites worldwide, with about 1,000 new ones emerging every year. A lot of the time, personally, if I, somebody come up to me in a bar, I would be quite apprehensive and I would generally not go ahead with it. Um, especially if it's in a club, like, you know, they don't even know their own name at that point. So I don't really, like, do that. It, usually it's just from, like, friends. It would be more the traditional way for me. But, yeah, I've had a lot of good days and I had some bad ones as well. I just prefer, the. I think I prefer just being in the flow of being, you know, just allowing the reality of a situation to develop. Uh, I've never tried actually, like, no, never actually, because I've been in a relationship since a long time, so no, I've never used uh, Tinder or all, all this stuff. I and I, I prefer to to be confronted to people in real life. Ironically, I'm in a relationship with someone who I ha did meet on uh, one of the dating apps, um, which kind of contradicts my opinion of dating apps because I find, or I did find, when I was using them for a while that the um, basically the difference between the real the real world and the online world is so remarkable you think that you're building a relationship with someone online um, but in fact the reality is that doesn't translate into the real world at all once you do finally meet you actually have to uh, restart rebuild and actually develop it in the real world it's not like an Amazon, it's not an eBay, it's you can't package a relationship or chemistry into an online kind of medium. So I'm very cynical and I, I mean, but it's ironic that yes, I am in a relationship that, that is Tinder. So we asked Tinder on how successful they've been in forging long-term relationships. They sent us an email with uh, statistics showing that they have 4 million subscribers worldwide They've uh, been responsible for 30 billion matches since their inception in 2012. And currently uh, they have, or they're responsible for 1.5 million dates per week. Now by their own admission, they say that they exclusively target the younger generation, or uh, I think their term is Generation Z, which is people 18 to 25 only, but their own research shows that 70% uh, of the Generation Z prefer to be single, of which 56% of females prefer to date rather than go into long-term relationships because it apparently gives them more confidence and they prefer to be more independent. But otherwise, my opinion before that was very cynical for that reason. I don't think you can communicate properly. I don't think you can establish any understanding of the other person. I think it's all fairly superficial um, and you can't exchange anything meaningful just through, you know, emojis and messages. So I think it's, it's, it's not a particularly realistic representation of, you know, love or chemistry. I'm not currently on any, but I have used Tinder in the past and Bumble. Uh, happened very briefly. I didn't like that. It seemed more of a hookup app than rather serious relationships, and um, plenty of fish. But that was I felt very harassed on there by sort of you can't uh, match people, so they don't know you. Anyone can contact you. So I was getting sort of older men that was like outside of my preferred age bracket. Um, but yeah, I did, I did like Bumble, which is where the woman talks first. Um, and actually had a relationship from that. Um, but yeah, not currently on any right now. I've only ever used one, one before, uh, Tinder, which is I think the most, the most famous one. I feel like probably now everyone is so busy. They have like their work, their lives. It's so hard to set aside time to just kind of like go to like a social setting where you're thinking about looking for a partner, um, whereas on the app, it's kind of like the intention is clear, 
um, worse if you meet somebody you don't know whether you know what their intention is I just feel like maybe it's more straightforward in the app for me I just didn't I just found it uh, so convoluted just not very um, comfortable no I haven't and I'm not really interested in it just I think I'm kind of skeptical about it I just I don't know it doesn't really feel um, that great I think funny thing I'd say though it's it's uh, a little bit too superficial in that people tend to come up with just a single sentence maybe uh, three or four pictures to go with it and it feels like it's a bit um, I don't know how People will only really match with people that they think are sort of well within the uh, the reach, you know. And, and I don't know. There's a little sense for me in which it, it kind of kills luck and serendipity, you know, sort of the opportunity to, you know, meet someone just by virtue of being sort of next to them, or um, it sort of maybe kills circumstance a little bit. I just think it's a bit impersonal, and most of it's just going off a photograph of someone, which I think is a bit bizarre. Usually. It depends on what the people expect from the from the online dating. Sometimes it's just like to meet people and get like like really quick relation. I don't know if you know what I mean. A friend very close to mine actually met his girlfriend uh, by t by using Tinder actually. Yeah, I do. I do get that because you talk a lot online, I guess. Um, so I think you can get to know each other, but it can also um, turn out completely different and be a totally different person in real life when you yeah, meet that person or you don't feel attracted to that person. Yeah, I think it's more the, the dating online is a different vibe than in person. I feel like you can get to know someone a bit easier if you're meeting them face to face rather than online. It feels like a bit of a persona that it's just kind of a facade. I think yeah, I've been on I've been on one Tinder date. I think that's it, just one. I think that's it, yeah, and we met twice. Um, but it was a bit. I oh, know I've been on two actually, and both of them I kind of felt the same way. I just was really nervous. I was like, I'm just going to meet a complete stranger, and just turn up like, hello. Let's do what we agreed to do ahead of time. I think most people exaggerate everything which tends to be the case with all social media, but anything would be exaggerated or manipulated or you're only picking out the best pieces rather than kind of getting to know someone naturally. But, but that's the thing, I think by, um, I mean, especially digital dating, I think that is very, I mean, well, you know, to hit something like that, it's probably like one in a million, maybe, I mean, in my humble opinion. So to to go on and do do, these online dating things it's yeah you have to go out and meet a million people in order I mean I think in order to generate or to have that sort of yeah, cosmic chemistry I guess what dating these dating apps and sites generally facilitate is like an arrangement with some sort of connection I mean the depth of the connection I think is very indicative of the individuals involved so it's um yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just not for me. <laughs> I never did online dating myself, but like, I'm not sure. Sometimes it works out for people, of course, and they meet someone and they're happy with them. But I've seen firsthand like that I was on a date with a friend who was having a date from Tinder and it was so awkward while well, they like you said before, like if you talk, it's okay. And then it's you have a connection, but when you meet a person in real life, then it's not there. So yeah, I've seen that firsthand. And um, yeah, I'm not into online dating myself. I must have terrible like Tinder game or whatever it's called. I'm, I just like would kind of have a small conversation with someone and it's just like over. I didn't intend on going on the app to like find a partner I just want to see what it's all about because um, I've been single for about two years before I decided so my friend was on it and then she told me about it so I just wanted to see what it was like basically yeah yeah I was a bit reluctant to use the dating apps but I did actually start using Bumble for about 
two, three months. My friend has been in a relationship in a relationship for about two years now, and she's really happy with the guy. Um, and before, yeah, she found him through Tinder, but before that, she's never really been into dating or fighting a guy or just, you know, random kissing in a club or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's been, yeah, really nice for her. And I'm really happy she found a guy she's happy with through Tinder. So it can also be, um, yeah, a good way to, to find someone. We met on the app and it was just my first time, do, like ever. And then um, we just started talking and then the rest is history. Like he's, I didn't meet a lot of people before I met him. So not a lot of experience there. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple where one, I was talking to him for like a month and then we met up and it was just, we seemed to get on really well via messaging. But as soon as we met, um, it was very clear that there was no chemistry. It was quite awkward. I think we were both sort of waiting for the date to be over, but didn't know how to broach it. <laughs> um, he said, oh, you're a lot posher than I thought. And I said, oh, well, <laughs> you're not as posh as I thought, <laughs> which is, it doesn't bother me, but um, yeah, there was a, it just felt like a real gap in expectations. Even though we got on, our sense of humor really seemed to match before we met. In real life, it just seemed completely different. So now I try and meet, um, if I match anyone, I try and meet them as soon as possible and then take it slowly, see where it goes from there. But I think don't put a lot of time and effort into something without meeting, but because chemistry in real life is very different from the persona people can give online. So yeah, that was interesting. It's a lot less natural. Like you have nothing to kind of pick up on. Like things don't just kind of like evolve. You're just it's like, oh, we're here because we're both looking for someone. It's like, okay. So it's just like very transactional. It's like, are you that person? Okay. Oh, okay, goodbye then. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like apps, you mean? Yeah. I've never used any of the ones that charge a fee, and I've never used any of the like paid features of the free ones, like Tinder or Bumble or whatever. But why not? I mean, if they if they kind of give you something extra and you're willing to pay for it, why not? I don't see any reason. If you're willing to pay for what the extra service, pay. So, there are so many countless dating agencies out there, online, apps, whatever it may be. And um, one thing we noticed from people we've been speaking to so far is that there's so much choice, but who do you go to? So, what I've done is I've decided to contact various dating agencies to determine you know, their story. So I've contacted supposedly the biggest, a company called Badu with 448 million subscribers worldwide in 190 countries speaking 47 languages. So I'm just about to speak to their marketing director to arrange an appointment. So here goes. Uh, so I'm here with uh, Dominic Gallello. Gallello. Uh, who's the uh, chief marketing officer of arguably the world's largest dating agency, which is Badu. My background is predominantly in consumer social products, and I've worked with social networks, I've worked with payment platforms, peer-to-peer -peer payment platforms, um, and really other types of um, Silicon Valley technology companies. Uh, but dating is a very different type of industry. Uh, most other platforms, and particularly most other Silicon Valley businesses, will talk about changing the world. We're here to change the world. We're here to change how society operates. We offer a very different promise to people. It's not necessarily about changing the world. It's about changing a life. Introducing someone to another person is fundamentally the biggest change of trajectory you can introduce to their lives. And so when I get to see all these inbound messages of people who are so excited, when I get on the phone with them and the way they talk about, oh, well, he messaged me first and she was so excited, it's really heartwarming. And, and that's the reason I love this business is because we're really here to help people meet and we're here to do something really meaningful for their lives, which is you know, pro probably the most exciting thing you could possibly be doing. With so many worldwide users, how do you attract new users so that they feel that they don't appear as a number. 
the world of dating apps in particular has been almost an integral part of cultural now for some time. And so as people enter into a new stage of life where they might become single, generally speaking, they're looking towards technology applications that might be able to assist them in their journey. Uh, so we try and really promote ourselves as a place where people can date honestly and give a message to people that really they can come on and be true with who they are and what they're really looking for. Um, so we're constantly trying to experiment with our marketing to try and attract those users uh, and give them a place where they can feel at home. So what about uh, Badu's unique selling point? How do you differentiate yourself from your competitors? Sure. Uh, so again, we talk about this place to date honestly, and what that really means is rich profiles. So on top of just being able to upload a photo album of images, uh, we have things like interests, being able to add music, being able to add um, questions on your profile. And then ultimately we enable you to discover people in different ways. So of course we have a, a something we call encounters, which allows you to look through different profiles individually. But we also have a screen called People Nearby, which allows you to really look around your community in your immediate area and find people that you might want to uh, meet and be interested in. Uh, but ultimately, these dating apps differentiate themselves through brand. And for us, it's about engendering our community with our values of openness and honesty. So wherever that the user is really interacting with our platform, we're encouraging them to express who, who are you? Um, what are you looking for? Uh, and that way you don't have this mismatch of intention that can often happen in the world of dating. Um, so we want people to be very clear about what their expectations are as they come onto this platform. Uh, on average, how long does it take for your users to find a date? It's hard to say because we don't really necessarily know exactly when you're going on a date. Uh, but generally speaking, we're really trying to measure actively um, when you're having a good conversation. So this is more than just like an exchange of, hey, hi, how are you? It is something meaningful and rich. And a lot of our users are actually able to experience that good chat on the very first day. Whether that good chat then translates into a date is something we're unfortunately not necessarily able to directly measure. Um, but that good chat metric really enables us to understand whether we're being successful in delivering our users the, that value that they're actually looking for. Uh, statistically, uh, do you have any information that shows your matches forge long-term relationships? So it's harder to say um, from the data, but I would say there's a couple things that are really stand out for me uh, around the, the benefits that this Badu experience provides. First is we have about 13,000 people every single day who delete their account. And when they delete their account, they, they click on the option because I met someone on Badu. And that is really, really spectacular. So on top of this, we also have a flood of messages, emails, um, and really just uh, notes from users that have found success on the platform. So they're writing us saying, I really, I met this girl four years ago on Badoo. We started chatting. Um, we've ultimately gotten married. We have kids. Now we have a home. Um, and it's really such a heartwarming experience to be able to see all these me messages come in every single day. It's a really uh, rewarding experience. And we're talking about um, dating in the future now. Um, what uh, challenges do you feel uh, the industry is going to be facing uh, particularly over the next 10 years. The biggest challenge in the dating space right now is this idea of injecting humanity back into the experience. A, a lot of what people feel right now is that dating apps can make you feel commodified in this in this platform and that you feel like just another number. And so what we're trying to do here at Badoo is really enable you to express your personality and make that profile feel as rich as possible and a reflection of the real you. And so we're constantly investing in ways um, through whether it's different features, whether it's music, whether it's interests, to allow you to say a little bit more about who you are than necessarily representing yourself through just a photo. I feel this is something that is happening all over the internet. It's not necessarily exclusive to the, the world of dating apps. It's true for places like Instagram. It's true for you know other types of apps that are out there that sort of express you as just an image. So really trying to bring this humanity back into the experience by allowing you to represent who you are. And then ultimately for us, it's about how do we help you connect with someone in a more meaningful way? How do we go beyond just that initial hi, hey, hello? Hello. So we invest in things like conversation starters that allow you to ask better questions to that person you just matched with. 
it's hard to talk to a stranger. It's really hard to build a connection with a stranger. And fundamentally, when we talk about openness and honesty, we talk about revealing yourself to another person so that you feel that connection, you feel that chemistry that makes you confident to go on that date. So what we're trying to do is enable those better conversations. So let's say you've matched with someone. Rather than just sending a hey or a hi, um, we will often not necessarily stop you, but prompt you, why not use one of our better questions? And so we've provided a list of hundreds of questions that we've put into the platform platform that are ultimately randomized when they pop up. Uh, but our best and most successful question was, so tell me, has a stranger ever changed your life? And that was ultimately the most successful question that had the highest response rate um, from the other person that you matched with, because suddenly you're not having a conversation about the weather, what did you do today, how was your day, you're suddenly getting to a more meaningful place about who you are and really what is the experience that you've been through um, that allows you to get to a more interesting uh, place from a conversation standpoint with that new match. Gentlemen, shame on you. We must have spoken to six or seven gentlemen today and not one of them prepared to contribute to this dating video. Why is that? Consider that all, most women we speak to are prepared to talk about their dating experiences. Men will keep stump. Uh, well, to be honest, I don't have a great deal of experience. I only know Tinder because it's, it's very low maintenance. There's no setup, there's no it's very non-time consuming. I can't, I mean, I didn't even write a profile for myself. Just simply uploaded some photos and, you know, it's a voyeuristic thing. You start swiping and you can do it whilst you're waiting for the train. Obviously there's the eHarmonies and your Guardian Soulmates, which apparently takes hours. You know, you have to really sort of write up proper uh, sort of person spec. Um, so I wouldn't know. I would only be able to comment on the, on the Tinder uh, angle, the, the sort of the quick fix, if that's the right expression, um, which I think, yeah, you have to take with a massive pinch of salt. Well, there are a lot. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I think it makes it harder if you have more options because then maybe the right person for you is it's not on, on a your app. Yeah, yeah, it's on a different app. So yes. that makes it harder, I think. Um, but yeah, you can't really change that, I guess. It's definitely here to stay, like, for sure. I'd recommend it, yeah. I haven't had any success with it, really. But, I mean, other people have. Um, obviously, like, everyone knows someone who's in a relationship, like with someone from Tinder, a long-term relationship. Personally, I only use one. I use Tinder. Um, I've I never dwelt into like other apps before, and I didn't know any other apps. The only thing, the only reason why I was on Tinder in the first place was because my friend um, used it. So that was the only app that I kind of wanted to try. Um, it was easy to use at that time, but I think something has changed now. There have there's new features that obviously I don't know about, so I can't advise on that. <laughs> yeah. I heard that there are like some new, in France there is like Badu, Badu or something like that. But yeah, I think that, I mean, in Europe from what I've heard of it, I'm not like a huge professional of that. in uh, online dating, but like Tinder still like remains the, the biggest, in my opinion. The older generation are just embracing it just as much, like pretty much Everyone has smartphones. I mean, there's probably still an age limit, but I think, uh, you know, people are coming out of divorces especially as well, and they're probably using apps as an interesting, there must be a market for that, I imagine, to meet someone after, you know, you've gone through a long-term breakup or something. Uh, yeah, and I, I know like, Everyone's mums are on Facebook now as well. So definitely, I think uh, the older generation are using dating apps, probably. You're, you're educating me here. I didn't know that there was such a market for the 50 pluses. And I'm surprised there isn't. But maybe well, now you're telling me there is. And so there should be. Um, as I say, my, given my limited use of the sort of suite of options, I only would be able to comment on, on a Tinder type sort of algorithm or, or, or interface which couldn't be any less tech heavy if it tried. I, th I, I did show it to my mum once and she wanted, uh, she wanted me to set up her profile on it, which I wasn't going to do. I don't think it didn't allow for her age group anyway. Um, but the, the, yeah, the, 
the usage issue is hardly a, a tech. It's, hard, it's hardly tech um, kind of complicated. Yeah, I've said I'm definitely approached by older gentlemen as well. Not always, <laughs> even though I request not to be. Uh, they always try their luck. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't. I'm just like, well, you know, you don't don't try, you don't get. So I don't <laughs> blame them. But I'm like, you know, I've said no, so you have to respect that. Going online, you have a chance to find out if your date has similar interests. Could this make a more compatible couple? Figures would suggest that meeting online produces a more stable long-term partnership. The number of partnerships which break up after a year are 5.7% online as opposed to 7.6% face-to-face. Then if the couple marries, the divorce rate is 40% for conventional meetings, but only 9% online. So I really think about the role that dating apps play as, as shifting over time, and particularly when we talk about younger generations. So traditionally, dating apps would tell you, we're here to find you the one. And it was a very romanticized view of what technology could potentially provide. Now, we certainly hope that is the case, but we take a really honest view of what the role dating apps play in your life, which is about the journey. It's not about that destination. It's about meeting new people. It's about encountering different personalities. And it's ultimately about learning about your yourself as you try and figure out what is the best type of partner for me. And I think in terms of Gen Z, what we're seeing is a, a level of comfort with being alone, but still a desire to experience the new, still a desire to go encounter new personalities. So the role of dating apps shifts over time. And particularly with Gen Z, it is really about enabling this individual who may feel um, a, a level of comfort with being single, uh, but ultimately still wants to go uh, meet with people and expand their network uh, through a platform like ours. I think like if you're spending your time developing an app, obviously you want to be earning money somewhere. So if they're charging for the app, if people, the consumers feel that it's worth to pay for, probably from feedback or from reviews, then it's fine by me. Um, I would normally go for something that's free first. If it doesn't work for me, probably think about that. But I honestly wasn't on it for very long. So I didn't even think about even considering other apps because I met the love of my life two months into it. So yeah, it was different, yeah. Uh, I think dating apps are a really powerful to, tool for people that are time strapped. So, you know, we have lots of people who are single parents or work busy jobs and don't, you know, not, don't even necessarily have time to go out at night. Um, so apps allow you to fill those in between moments with that opportunity to potentially meet with someone, uh, so, you know, certainly online and ultimately carry that conversation on uh, until you're ready to go out in the real world and meet with them. Uh, so it's this shift that I think a lot of people are feeling right now in the space of dating overall, where you don't have time to go out and meet someone in a bar. You don't have time to necessarily uh, you know, meet someone in, in a sporting event or a club or anything else like that. So dating apps help fill that gap of a modern busy life by allowing you to meet with people and break outside of that daily routine of your life uh, to potentially interact with someone new. The, the ease of access to certain apps like Tinder obviously allows for, how do I say this without being too snobbish, a whole sort of spectrum of caliber. So you can have guys on there, I'm sure, who have no morals or scruples and by all accounts you know they're quite shameless in how they present themselves and you know those are the types that women have a right to be um you know protective from so i don't begrudge them you know doctoring their accounts in any way that makes them feel safe. So we take data privacy enormously seriously here at Badoo. Um, a lot of that is about our internal operations. So we ensure that no data actually leaves any of the own properties that we have here. That means not using third party services to pass user data to anyone else um, that may ultimately get compromised. So we take that extremely seriously in terms of how we operate as a business. Uh, and ultimately we are trying to provide better safety tips for individuals who are on the platform form in their behavior. So be, make sure to keep the conversation on Badoo. Try not to give out your phone number. Or when you are about to go on a date, um, what are the best safety tips that you can think about as you go out there, whether it's letting a friend know that you're going on a date, um, whether it's just making sure that you're in a more public space. Um, these are the types of things we take very seriously to make sure that you're protected, not only in terms of your data, but also your everyday behavior on the platform. I think, yeah, you do have a sort of blind faith that they're not going to use that information against you, but they do collect data on you. But I think 
my generation now kind of assume that everyone's collecting data on us and we don't know how it's going to be used. Um, I think we all just kind of hope that we're not important enough <laughs> that anyone will want that data. It's a concern, I guess, but we just, I don't think it puts people off using the apps. I think we, we're like, oh, we're used to it. We'll just do it anyway. But obviously there are challenges with the app as well. Obviously you're afraid of being catfish. You don't know whether this person is responsible or um, you don't know, You don't, obviously you don't want to be meeting somebody you know, in like a empty building like you always, I always try to meet somebody in like a public place so yeah just you have to be safe yourself as well uh, so let me address the fictitious profile problem, um, which is certainly prevalent within the dating app space. Uh, on Badoo, we ask every user to verify their profile. And so what we ask you to do is take a selfie and mimic a gesture. So that's a selfie with a gesture like this or like this or like this. Um, and then we have uh, both machine learning to match that photo against your profile photo. Um, and if the match feels incongruent, then we'll send it to a team of 5,000 moderators. That way, as you're going through Badoo and looking at profiles, you have a blue check Mark to know that that person is a real person uh, and you're not about to be catfish. So we take that very seriously to ensure that every single user feels they have an enormous amount of trust in the people that they're about to meet. I think there's really negative potential in both. I don't know if I could really um, say one was worse than the other or something. It really depends. There's going to be like undesirables in both camps that you just be unlucky and meet one of them. Well, the thing with Tinder is that you don't really give too many details. So I guess it's not as as uh, risky as it might be on other dating sites where it's a bit more, a bit more comprehensive, you know, where you're giving it sort of a lot more details about, you know, a lot uh, far greater, sort of, how to say, uh, more aspects about your life. Whereas on Tinder, you know, you just have a few photos and uh, I think your age, your gender or your, or your sex and, um, and that's about it. So, you know, what, what worst case scenario, if that gets compromised, uh, I don't think it's... It's dramatic. Maybe the fact that you're on it might get some people into trouble. Um, but other than that, I, I don't think it's quite quite as risky as, as some of the some of the ones that go perhaps in more depth. You know, where people talk about their sort of the, the, the childhood, the, the hobbies, their preferences, and their interests, which people don't really seem to do too much of on Tinder. Just just awkwardness. I just didn't. I just don't really. Uh, don't I feel that? <laughs> I feel that. But I, I don't know. It could be a British thing. I think dating is very much a an American sort of construct and I think um, yeah and I'm also Indian so I think in India it's also very <clears throat> sort of new as a as a notion or an idea. Um, with Bumble the girls have to talk first which I think made me feel a lot more comfortable so um, if I matched with a guy I would have to start the conversation so if I matched with him and then decided I didn't want to talk to him I didn't have to and there's only a 24 hour period that you can have that conversation and then they disappear. So yeah, it's a lot, I think it's, for girls especially, I think if you think that it's gonna be like unsafe or I know people get sent a lot of like rude things on Tinder and stuff like that, I think Bumble was the best option for me. I don't think I really have a best date. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I haven't dated for uh, <clears throat> probably like two years. Because um, I do get really, really nervous. Um, and that's why I would rather like start off with friends um, because then it's easier for me to get to know a person because it's not, um, there's not like um, a pressure or something. When you call it a date, then it's so formal. And I think about it as a formal thing, like as something really serious. And I get really nervous about that. So it doesn't really feel natural anymore for me. So that's what makes it kind of hard. Um, for me to date, I guess. Probably like whenever uh, me and my partner had our first date, it was just really easy. It was just in like a coffee shop. We just got coffee and then we just talk. And then, do you know sometimes when you meet somebody for the first time, you have that fear of like, oh, what do I say next? Or like the awkwardness that lingers, but there was just nothing there. It was just as if we've been known, like we've known each other for the rest, like for a very long time. And we just kind of, hit it off so i probably say that was like the best kind of dates where you already kind of feel comfortable with that person the worst ones would be where you're like awkward all the time it doesn't for me it doesn't take me very long to know whether i can get along with somebody if there's chemistry there so if you find out very early on that there's nothing there and then you have to 
be on a date for the rest of the day is kind of awkward, yeah. I think what happens when you're communicating online, you're, you're not in a spontaneous capacity. You're thinking of smart, clever, kooky, witty, funny little jibes, and then you're building a, a false persona. And the other person's thinking, oh, you're so funny and cute and charming, but actually you meet in real life and it's a big, it's a big letdown. It's a big disappointment, which is why you have to sort of start again. I think Tinder opens a door or Tinder equivalent opens the door, opens a platform for meeting and then you have to start again. So I can't cite one particular disaster. Um, there's also, you know, you can sort of cheat your profile a bit with Photoshop. Um, there were some dimensional issues with some of my uh, orig uh, early, early sort of dates, I'd, I'd think. Oh, it's not quite how I remember you looking. So there, yeah, there's all sorts of fiddling that can go on. Um, and I, I have experienced that in the past. Um, I wouldn't say a disaster day. Um, I did meet a guy on Bumble when I turned up. Wasn't what I thought he was going to be, so I stayed for one drink and left. Um, and that obviously didn't go any further because it was nothing that I wanted. There was no chemistry there. Like I say, it's not like when you meet someone in person and you know there's an instant connection. Um, he had good chat on Bumble, but it wasn't the same when I met him in person. And he didn't look like his pictures. To be told, I just ended the date saying that I need to have an early night because I'd work tomorrow. Um, which is quite bad, but then I did message him afterwards to say, look, I don't think like we're a match. Um, I wasn't feeling the chemistry. I don't think this will be going any further. I don't really have a, a best date or a worst date. I, I think um, I just go, sit, interact, have a bit of a chit chat. I actually had one worst date where the guy was um, actually quite racist in the first five minutes. Um, like ca casually racist, like assuming because I was white that I would like go along with it or something. And I was like, I pulled him up on it. I was like, and I said, well, this is awkward. Uh, but I did actually continue the day. Um, but then afterwards didn't call him back. But it, it, yeah, it was an awkward one. And at the end of the night, yeah, I think we both knew it wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, he sort of tried to salvage it. I don't know if he thought maybe he could still get something else out of me, like physically for the night or something, but I wasn't interested in taking it further. But I think a lot of, I don't know about women, but guys nowadays, even if they think, oh, it's not going anywhere, they might try and still get you into bed. <laughs> so they'll still try and continue the date, even if it's awful, <laughs> uh, which is a bit depressing. <laughs> Uh, well, I think just, you know, being honest, no point in coming up with excuses. Uh, if, it's, if it's so bad as to want to sort of uh, leave it after five minutes, then I think that uh, you can be clear about, you know, not wanting to, to keep it up. Uh, I, think, I think no one's going to really fault you for being, for being honest, you know. Uh, there's a lot that goes into two people liking each other, so I, I don't think it's... I wouldn't take it personally if someone wasn't interested in me, just how I don't think anybody else should take, should take it personally if, if somebody else is, isn't interested in them. But no, I don't think I've ever had someone do a chat up line on me. I don't think they work, no. Guys should be themselves if they like approach someone and don't try to be someone funny, but just themselves. Uh, me personally, I, I suppose so. I mean, but I think it could be um, interpreted differently from a, like a female perspective or, or someone else. It depends, you know, depends who I'm dating or what I'm dating. But yeah, I mean, I, like I, I date girls, so uh, generally, uh, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> I never know anyone that is properly dating now because the guy used a chat up line on her. Um, doesn't personally work on me. I just feel like it's kind of Corny, <laughs> yeah. Because I never tried them. <laughs> I did, I did have it once. It's, I don't think it's really a chat up line, but there was this guy and he was like, he asked me if he could give me two kisses on the cheek. And then afterwards he asked me if he could give me one kiss. Well, that was it. And I was like, all right, what, what just happened here? <laughs> but um, that was, that was pretty funny. Actually, I think that's, it's, it's not really really useful to have like really good lines uh, like to, to to start a conversation with a, with a girl or a guy but it's like the hardest thing to do but it doesn't matter what you say I mean you can say just like hey uh, like 
I don't know, like, where are you from? Or, oh, what are you doing here? But it's not really important what you say, it's just like making the first move, I guess, for me. No, I don't think it, a traditional chat up line is appropriate. Like if you're just going up to a stranger and just, it's just so bizarre, it's so outdated, unless it's really ironic. But yeah, no, I think it's bizarre. Well, I, I wouldn't be using them. I don't know where this is going. Um, I shouldn't be using them and I wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they come back round, if the old, uh, even if the cheesy ones come back into fashion. I'm sure, I'm sure we've lost a lot of the kind of the old fashioned courting, um, which, you know, is, is a sadness. It's a, it's a sad reality. So I'm, I'm sure that um, before long, the old fashioned path to love and romance will be very much on vogue again. And uh, even the, the cheesiest lines might, you know, once again, breathe life. So yeah, I'd say give it a, well, it's probably been a good 10 years, I suppose, that the, the, this online dating has really exploded. So I think we'll, we'll see, we'll see uh, the old fashioned, you know, domain come back into its own, I think. Uh, yeah, I do actually. Because um, I think it's about confidence, um, but it kind of, I guess it needs to be a chat up line individual to the person. Um, so if someone gets to know me a little bit, ask me a few questions and then can like get in a cheesy line based on that, you know, that shows a bit of quick wit. Um, but yeah, I guess I quite like, because it's, it's cheesy humour and if you can get someone to laugh, you're instantly breaking down, you know, showing them uh, that you're harmless. Because I think for a lot of women, actually, immediately we can be like, oh, is this guy a threat? Um, so yeah, it's about showing them you're not, but I guess guys could do, could use that and then still be a threat. Um, but you kind of have to have a bit of faith that they're not. Um, and vice versa. I don't know. <laughs> um, looking good, smelling good, working out a bit. Just be genuine and don't be a cliche. You know, a lot of guys are like, oh, I want a girl who doesn't take themselves really seriously, but at the same time, um, have like, it's really ambitious. That's kind of like, what are you saying? So just be genuine and like, and then, if you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody, tell them from like, you know, very early on. So the girl don't have these expectations that, oh, we might be going somewhere and then you just ghost them. That's not very nice to anyone, not just to girls. Like it, it um, goes both ways. I just think sometimes if you're online dating, I think a lot of guys like from experience just kind of said, hey, you okay? And I think coming up with something a bit more inventive or funny or actually looking at their profile and like coming up with something interesting is a good way to start a conversation but i think in meeting in person i think you can kind of get the the grasp if someone wants to talk to you by the eye contact so i think if you've got something interesting to say like go up to them and say something or if you think that they look nice like say oh i'd just like to let you know you look beautiful today or something like that instead of like wolf whistles or something horrible that some men do in the street um i don't know i think do you know what i mean yeah exactly. yeah i think yeah, just to have something interesting to say. If this is, if you're wanting to meet somebody, then make it for the right reasons, not just something short term because they're there in the moment. Don't play mind games. That's very high school. That's really stupid. Um, for me, it was because my boyfriend. He's just really clear and straightforward from the very start. It's everything is easy. It should be easy. It shouldn't be hard. Like if you find that you're asking yourself what is going on, like does he like me? Does he not? probably doesn't so I would say be clear as well like you don't want to waste other people's time you know we're all busy you don't want to wait you don't want to be wasting anyone's time and just be nice in general you know, I don't know what, what what the opposite sex likes in people but I mean is all that really necessary in order to attract the opposite sex because it's then it's a lot about aesthetics but then that I mean that's my initial point like thought on that but yeah I think just what would make people more attractive is just working on themselves and developing all skill sets. I think be nice. Like so many people will come up and start taking the mick out of you, trying to be like a bit of banter. And actually, like if a stranger's coming up and slagging you off, that's not flirting. That's just 
ridiculous. Like, why would I keep talking to someone who does that? If they want to stick around, then just be a bit nicer and genuinely ask questions. Don't just be like, what are you doing later? Like, get to know me. And, and most people are expressing a desire to do something outside of the ordinary drink date where you're just kind of going on an interview. Um, I would recommend to anyone that I would, you know, go on an adventure, go try something different, go take a walk with someone. Um, do something a little bit outside of the ordinary because it's going to create a little bit more of a special connection with that person and you'll be able to experience something together, which is certainly the ultimate outcome that you're trying to get to. This is obviously the zeitgeist of modern day courting. so. I think soon enough, sooner or later we'll have a, a generation of Tinder babies or where everyone is born from an online relationship. So yeah, I do believe it. I just personally, I struggled with the format. Um, eventually, law of averages, I've met somebody, um, but I, I would still prefer, being old fashioned, I would still prefer the face-to-face the -face game. I would hope that it would, the online dating wouldn't stay, I would like to hold people would meet people organically because I just think it's a lot more natural. You might have more things in common because you've met on some kind of common ground. So it looks like online dating is here to stay. Will we all be relying on computer algorithms to find our perfect partners? Yeah, I'll keep using it. I'll keep using it.